The mass weighing twenty pounds stretches a spring six inches. The mass is any medium that exerts a viscous resistance of a pounds, or a is unknown, when the mass has a velocity of four feet per second. The system will be critically damped if a equals how many pounds? Again, where a is the viscous resistance when the mass has a velocity of four feet per second. If there are no other outside forces acting on this system, this is free damped vibration, which we can model using this linear second order homogeneous differential equation, where m is the mass, gamma is the damping coefficient, and k is the spring constant. We would solve this differential equation using a characteristic equation, and the nature of the solutions to the characteristic equation determine the type of damping. Remember, we can describe the nature of the solutions to a quadratic equation by using the discriminant, which in this case, gamma squared minus four m k would be the discriminant of the corresponding characteristic equation. So if gamma squared minus four m k equals zero, the system is critically damped, which is what we want. If gamma squared minus four m k is greater than zero, the system is over damped. And if gamma squared minus four m k is less than zero, the system is under damped. Let's first list all the given information. We know the mass weighs 20 pounds, so W equals 20 pounds. The spring is stretched six inches, so L equals six inches. But we need this to be in feet because the velocity is in feet per second. Six inches is equal to half a foot. And then we're told there's a viscous resistance of A pounds when the mass has a velocity of four feet per second which means the damping force, F sub D, is equal to A pounds when, because the displacement function is U of T, the velocity would be U prime of T, so F sub D equals A pounds when U prime of T is equal to four feet per second. And now let's work on determining the mass, the damping coefficient, and the spring constant. So the mass, is equal to W divided by G. Well, W is 20 pounds, and G, the acceleration due to gravity, is equal to 32 feet per second squared. 20 over 32 simplifies to 5 eighths, so the mass is 5 eighths, and the units would be slugs. And now let's find the damping coefficient using the formula. The damping force equals the opposite of gamma, the damping coefficient, times the velocity given by u prime of t. But we are going to modify this slightly because the damping force is always in the opposite direction of the velocity, which means we can ignore this negative sign here and say that gamma is equal to the damping force divided by the velocity. So in this case, we'd have a pounds divided by the velocity of four feet per second. So we have A divided by four, and we can express the units as pounds seconds per foot or pounds per foot per second. And then finally K, the spring constant, is equal to W divided by L, which would be 20 pounds divided by half a foot, which equals 40 pounds per foot. Now that we have m, gamma, and k, we can set up the equation gamma squared minus four mk equals zero, and then solve for a to determine what a must be so the system is critically damped. Let's do this on the next slide. Gamma squared would be the square of a divided by four minus four times m, which is five eighths, times k, which is 40, must equal zero. So we have a squared divided by 16. Simplifying here before multiplying, there's one eight and eight, and five eighths and 40. So we have minus four times five times five, which is 100, equals zero. Adding 100 to both sides, we have a squared divided by 16 equals 100. Multiplying both sides by 16, we have a squared equals 1,600. 
Remember, A is the force in pounds, so now we take the principal square root of both sides of the equation, and we have A equals 40, and the units here would be pounds. So going back to our first slide, if the median exerts a resistance of 40 pounds, when the mass has a velocity of four feet per second, then the system is critically damped. Notice how that also tells us if the resistance is greater than 40 pounds, when the mass has a velocity of four feet per second, then the system would be overdamped. And if the resistance is less than 40 pounds, when the mass has a velocity of four feet per second, then the system is underdamped. So before we go, let's review each type of damping. A critically damped system, which is a system that we have when A equals 40 pounds, returns to equilibrium as quickly as possible without oscillating. An overdamped system returns to equilibrium without oscillating, but notice how here it does not say as quickly as possible. And the third type is an underdamped system, which oscillates with an amplitude gradually decreasing to zero. And if the system is not damped, we can say it's undamped. An undamped system oscillates at its natural resonance frequency. I hope you found this helpful.